So today's talk is a little different. Uh, this is one of my very recent work with a current PhD student. Uh, he's originally from Korea. Uh, and it is actually many of the ideas are existing and then we just put together existing in machine learning area. So that's one of the area along with statistical computation, a lot of prospect can be done in Bayesian methods and analysis. So the title is the Bregman Divergence Measures in Bayesian Modeling. So here is the outline of the talk. We'll talk about introduction to Bregman Divergence Measures, Bayesian Model Diagnostics, Bayesian Point Estimation, and model selection and simultaneous estimation and variable selection. So it covers a lot of materials and I don't think I will be, uh, it will be justice for me to cover everything. But the slides are there and anybody can contact me whenever all the papers are written, I will send them if needed. <coughs> the idea, as I mentioned, is kind of unifying many ideas together and many of the standard results relating to Bayesian modeling will be a special case of this. So first of all, what is the introduction? What is the Bregman divergence? So initially it may look a little complicated mathematical formula, but once I explain it will be very, very clear. Here is the formal definition. So it provides a means to measure the dissimilarity between two vectors. That's the initial way it started. And the definition is, suppose we have a function, shine, and its domain is like some parameter space, and uh, two real line, a strictly convex function on a convex set omega subset of Rn, assumed to be non-empty and differentiable. Then for x, y belongs to Rn, the Bregman diverge is defined as B D shy. Shy is, you have to choose a strictly convex function. So this is a very general definition. Shy of x minus shy of y minus the inner product of x minus y, comma, the derivative of shy y. This is a differential function where del shy refers to the gradient vector of shy. The Bregman divergence can be interpreted as the difference between the value of the convex function at x and its first order Taylor expansion at y. Whenever I give example, things will be very, very clear to you. <coughs> then I will talk about next definition. It's a function. So, so far I have defined between two vectors. So it could be, uh, a vector could be like a parameter, and then the other point could be an action in a decision theory framework. Then, the fragment divergence can be treated as a loss function. So a whole bunch of decision theory one can develop using fragment divergence. So next definition, talk about functional fragment divergence. Functional Bregman divergence is a functional version of Bregman divergence. That is, the functional Bregman divergence measures the dissimilarity between two functions. Earlier, it was dissimilarity between two vectors, and it could be parameter vector and an action or decision, then it becomes a loss function. So, here, between two functions. So, let x will be a sigma finite measure, f1 and f2 do non-negative measurable functions. So again, for simplicity, you can think of f1 and f2 are two density functions, but it could be even more general than that. Then psi is a function, strictly convex differentiable. Then the function of Bregman divergence is defined as f b d psi between f1 and f2, and this can take Again, if you look at it, it's a shy of f1x minus shy of f2x, the functional difference minus just the difference of the function and then the derivative of that. 
and with respect to P. So you can think of, if you want to estimate a density function, then a functional fragment divergence will be very, very appropriate. Because this will define a loss function on the space of functions. So density function, and then even from that, you can derive other type of loss function like entropy loss function and so on. Okay, now we'll define the Bregman matrix divergence. The Bregman matrix divergence measures the dissimilarity between two sorry, matrices, it should be. Definition, shy star, the strictly convex and differential function, just like before. Now you have two matrix, matrices, X and Y. You can define BMD shy star. It's just like that. Instead here, the inner product is now transformed to trace of that. For example, you are already familiar with certain aspect of special cases. Like if you want to estimate a covariance matrix, then X could be a sigma covariance matrix and Y could be some decision matrix, uh, action or decision, will be equal to this, and I'll talk about a shy star, and minus this. So this could be used as a loss function for estimating a matrix. And then, oh, another beauty of the matrix Bregman divergence is that you can do approximation of matrices using that. A lot of time, especially when you have reduced rank matrix or very high dimensional matrix, then you can use that to approximate that matrix to a manageable matrix. So another problem here is the definition is the total fragment divergence. So total fragment divergence is that it is really a further modification of fragment divergence when and it is at the same time robust. So that means in presence of outliers, it is better to use the total Bregman divergence. And its definition is just like the Bregman divergence, and then you divide by 1 plus norm del shy squared. So del shy is as before the gradient. Now, it is interesting that through these Bregman divergence, total Bregman divergence, you can also construct prior. And we'll talk about a little later about that. Now, geometrically what it means, the total Bregman divergence measures the orthogonal. So here is a shy function. <coughs> I took a intentionally common shy function are like squared and lost. Say any loss function you can think of, that would be a shy function. Now this loss function is probably pretty well known as called Linux loss function. Linear in one direction and uh, exponential in other direction. Especially it's used when underestimations and overestimations are treated in different fashion. And of course the common loss function is the square error loss. And then the picture will be just much simpler. So this is really the shy function. And I have shy y, y here, and x here. So shy x. Uh, geometrical interpretation of this will be bd shy is nothing but the solid line like this one. And dbd is the dotted line. So Total fragment is the orthogonal distance between the value of the convex function at x and its tangent at y, while well, the Bregman divergence measures the ordinary distance. Okay, these are all the definitions. Now, now you'll see a lot of things are very popular and common to many of you. Like the Bregman divergence includes a large class of well-known loss functions. Examples of the Bregman divergence generated by some convex functions, shy, are shy x equal to norm x squared, then Bregman is x minus y squared, and the loss function is squared over loss. 
If it's a quadratic form, then it's the Mahanagar distance. If it is sum of xi log xi, then this is very well known. A loss function, then if you go that line that diverses. And so on. Where did the next log which I could assign to this is? But you, you may think that, or you may ask that, you have to know shy x. The question is, you get, without knowing the exact shy x, you can get a lot of general results. Now, every regular exponential family corresponds to unique and distinct breakband divergence, one to one mapping. So, for example, BD x mu. If, if you have x and mu, we want to define this, then the shy of x is 1 over 2 sigma square x square, which is normal uh, 0 sigma square, but in that class. So, shy x is this, so it's a normal mu sigma square. So, what does it tell that? That, that means, if you define a breakband divergence on a space, then you can construct a corresponding density function. That is a corresponding prior also. So, for example, if you have a uh, regression problem, we have a parameter beta, and then you want to see how far it is from zero. Okay, under Euclidean norm, then that will give you the normal as a density function. So, a lot of time, uh, it is not a lot, but most of the time, you can associate the distance function on a space of points with a particular density function. So that, and that is very much useful in clustering analysis problem, or cluster analysis problem. Now, expected breakman divergence has the unique minimizer, which is the mean for any convex function. This is a very interesting result, that whatever convex function you have, very general result, the expected breakman divergence has the unique minimizer, which is the mean even if your shy are different for any convex function. Okay. So that means you can actually calculate under Bregman averages, the posterior mean will be the base rule because it minimizes it. Okay, I'll come back to some of this issue again. Now let's talk about variation model diagnostics using functional Bregman uh, here, quite a few people work on model diagnostics, and many of people here used like sh uh, shy divergence, which I introduced at some point. I mean, for model diagnostic, it was chosen uh, distance function. So we'll see now how it can be actually generalized from Bayesian model diagnostics with a function. So in general, it's important, but this portion of the talk is already published in Journal of Multivariate Analysis, so you can look at the detail. So I'll skip or go very quickly on uh, the, this particular portion. So model diagnostics is a very important issue and the corresponding patient sensitivity analysis. Measuring a divergence between an unperturbed or full Posterior distribution and a partner posterior distribution can be directly applied to Bayesian model diagnostics with perturbations on the likelihood or on the prior or both. So there is a quick literature survey which I think many of the people here know. Um, like Payne and Day, one of my former students, 95, he used, he actually we together developed this F divergence. But now, interestingly, that will be a special case of Bregman divergences. So our method enabled to measure the discrepancy between unparted, whether it's a perturbation in the prior or in the likelihood or both, everything can be captured using this more general measure. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this portion, as I mentioned, I'll go quickly because kind of already published and familiar to many people, you know. 
So this is a typical example of a perturbation. And then outlier detection context, you can, so these are well-known methods, already published. But then let's talk about the functional Bregman. So functional Bregman, since the functional Bregman diverges, measure the discrepancy between two probability densities. Discrepancy between posterior and a perturbed posterior can be measured using the functional Bregman, which is simply equal to this. Now, you can actually choose different chi function in the table I proposed before, but let's talk about a particular class of complex function, which is pretty popular in differential geometry literature, uh, which is chi of alpha x has this form and otherwise this. So this is a very general class. <coughs> Note that the convex function, psi alpha x, is continuous. The problem here is that we cannot obtain the above quantity directly due to the fact that in many cases the integral cannot be expressed in a closed form. That's one of the issues. So now we need to bring approximation. So in order to overcome this problem, we propose two different ways to approximate the functional breakdown. One is the Gaussian approximation and other is the importance weighted marginal density estimation. So Gaussian approximation is just approximate the posterior using some normal approximation and then correspondingly d shy pi pi delta can be approximated by using this formula. Okay, and then similarly, so I'm not going into much of the computation. The important sampling is another way, of course, you can do. But you have to develop some new technique if you work on some large big data problem or large p small n problem. Many of these will change appropriately. Okay, so I'll skip some of the detail of computational technique. If anybody is interested, you can look at the Journal of Multivariate paper, just published 2014. So all this Monte Carlo estimate of functional Bregman divergence there. And then other things also very similar, like calibration problem, uh, and then some nice examples are there. Oh, it should be 2014 for more details. The calibration problem I, is very similar to the shy divergence or pi divergence calibration. Okay, so let's talk about the Bayesian point estimation with Bregman divergence. That's the part two of the talk. So what, and let me give a pause that bit. I have already introduced the Bregman divergence between vectors, between matrices, and between functions. And then I define a robustness idea by considering total Bregman divergence. And you apply it in uh, outlier detection and model diagnostic scenario. So now we'll go back to the formal definite, formal decision theoretic idea using the Bregman diagram. So in a Bayesian decision theoretic perspective, the, perspective, the Bayes estimate or Bayes root of the parameter theta denoted by theta hat Bayes is the minimizer of the Bayes risk or equivalent with the posterior expected loss with respect to a certain loss function. So there is theta hat Bayes is the argument of the minimum of this, where L is the, that's the standard definition. Here we show that the posterior mean is the base rule corresponding to any loss function under the placement diagram. So this is a very powerful result and hard to believe in the beginning, but you, if you see, the proof will be very uh, obvious. 
So further more to show that the posterior wall, so that's the posterior knee. So the first, this is a very important theorem that the posterior knee is the base rule corresponding to any loss function under Blackman diagonal. And we also show that the posterior mode, posterior mode actually is very useful by many people do that because of uh, it's called MAP estimator, maximum A posterior. Especially image processing, people use a lot uh, because a lot of time they are interested about estimating the central tendency, not the variable which is. So we show that the posterior mode is the base estimator under a weak breakman divergence in which the convex loss fun convex function shy is free of the strict convexity. So that is strict, <coughs> little weaker assumption. So let's talk about the posterior mean. So A be an estimator of an unknown vector theta. We define the loss function as this. B D shy is the breakman divergence. Assume that the posterior mean exists, then the minimizer of the corresponding posterior expected law is this for any strictly convex depression function shy. So if the unknown parameter theta is a matrix, then theta is defined over R Q cross Q. And then the proposition becomes A is an estimate of the unknown matrix sigma defined over R Q cross Q. So like estimation of covariance matrix, define the following loss function where BMD shy is the Bregman diagram matrix divergence. And then the posterior B will be again R B. And this will be very simple to calculate. I mean, in scalar problem, you can just differentiate and you can also argue from just from inequality point of view using convexity. So, consequently, the posterior mean vector or matrix is the base rule not only under the squared error loss or squared Frobenius norm for matrices but also under many well-known loss function belong to this class. So let's talk about the posterior mode. The posterior mode or equivalently maximum A posterior estimator is another popular Bayes rule. So unlike Bayes estimator, Bayes rule in a decision theoretical framework which minimizes the posterior expected loss, the map estimator directly maximizes the posterior density like the maximum likelihood estimator, like. So, the following theorem shows that the map estimate is also a base rule which minimizes certain loss function induced by weak breakman diagonals. So, this is the theorem. Uh, let A be an estimator and L theta is defined in this fashion. So, this is really finding the divergence between two posterior distribution. One is for the theta given y, other is for action given y. So this is your Bregman divergence, that's the loss function. Then max, that is max estimate is the R the max of this, is R the mean of that. And immediately you will see that that will be the map estimate. Okay. The next part, which will be pretty much the last part, the Bayesian model selection with Bregman diagonals. So now my goal is to model selection. So first we did uh, point estimation, first general definition, then the point estimation, both for mean and for the posterior mode. And then, of course, if you want to find interval estimate or credible set, you have to do some approximation of that, like Gaussian approximation or some other important sampling approaches and so on, or any other type of approximation to create the credible interval. So, model selection. Now, model selection, uh, one of the most standard and most popular is the base factor that 
many patients will love for the moon selection. And also, uh, some of us may populate the conditional predictive ordinate and pseudo base factor, uh, partly because base factor is very difficult to calculate in many problems and it has to be proper parameter. Whereas pseudo base factor or conditional predictive ordinate can it can actually we can calculate without the proper prior as long as the posterior is <coughs> So these are the posterior predictive densities in sequential approach or other intrinsic base factor. So people are doing this basic research maybe for last 50, 20 years back. And then more and more papers evolved with application of these by computing this quantity. So here with the intention of generalizing and unifying various existing methods, we introduced a new model selection called criteria generated by the Bregman diapersis in view of Bayesian predictive inference. So what which we'll define called Bregman divergence criteria or BDC, which generalizes all of that by choosing different you know, for a class of shy function. But for calculation of the proposed criteria, we develop Monte Carlo estimator, which significantly eases the computational burden associated with our approach. Furthermore, an approximation method based on the Laplace approximation is introduced in case of implementation of the Monte Carlo method is unrealistic. Okay. So, some notation and assumption. These are standard notations from decision theory, like f of y given theta is the likelihood function, m y is the marginal distribution, conditional, prior, posterior. We remark here that there is no restriction on the nature of the posterior, that the posterior can be in density with respect to level measure or with respect to counting measure, or can also be mixture of tensions. So predictive model selection and decision making. The predictive model selection problem can be considered as a decision making problem. In other words, it should be other. The optimal with respect to a loss function model among a class of proposed model is the one whose predictive density is closest to the true density. We of course don't know the true truth. To formalize the idea, let M star be the true model, some true model, and script M is the collection of M on M to M K, be a finite set of proposed predictive models, where K is assumed to be known, and part that there is no preferred model. Suppose Y1 tilde, these are future observations corresponds to the observed Y1, Y2, Y1. Okay, this is very important. Let P star be the vector of the two conditional predictive densities of Y tilde given Y, such that P star is this vector, uh, vector of this densities. For the model MK, define the vector of its conditional predictive densities as P super K equal to this one. So remember that y tilde is the future observation and y1, y2 are direct observed data. So and b star we define in this fashion for m star. And for any k from 1 to uppercase k, we define these. Then the predictive model selection problem can be formulated in the following manner. Find the model that has a minimum dissimilarity, is very important, between P star and PK. That is, determine K star such that K star is the argument of the minimum of some divergence between PK and P star. If you go back, <coughs> so closest to the true density, that's the 
key point. And here, this will be, then the predictive model that can be formulated, find the model that has a minimum dissimilarity between P star and PK, and determine K star such that this, where D dot is an appropriate divergence measure. In view of Bayesian decision theory, this strategy looks very simple and reasonable, but two serious problems occur in practice. First, since the true model M star is unknown, consequently P star is unknown. Second, the future observation YI tildes are not available in many cases. The so solution for the first problem, in order to address the first issue, it is fair to note that probability of observing new data from the true model conditioned on one having observed data from the true model needs to attain a maximum under the true model. Hence the following maximizer k double star can be used to make an appropriate decision instead of the use of minimizer k star. This is a little complicated but uh, we just reduce this problem finding k double star as r max of these where p double star is this and P y i tilde y m double star is less than n k for any i from 1 to m and k from 1 to k. So what it does really is that we find a maximizer k double star and then consider m double star as p double star equal to that quantity. The model m double star in 15 can be interpreted as the worst model since its conditional predictive density is always it should be farther from the true density than any proposed model. Therefore, the farthest model M K double star from the worst model M double star should be closest to the true model M star. This argument you think a little bit. And for the second problem, uh, we have to take the Gelfand Day approach or sequential approach. So here the general result is that if y1, y2, yn are observed and ys1 to y, that means we have to do some sort of a cross validation because we don't know the future. Okay. And that is the fundamental between both our approach, Gelfand Day, as well as uh, the approach of uh, Berger and Perich increasing base factor. So the idea here is that define YSI, we just basically form partition, subset of the component. And now we treat YSI and Y in parentheses with the future observation and observed data sets respectively. So since we don't know the future, Clearly, we just have to do some cross validation of it, that is, leave some out. So, this totally is the new approach is we assume throughout the true model is unknown and no future observation exists. Under the assumption, our methodology stands on finding k double star such that k double star is r max d p double star p k. PK equal to this, where PIK that and P double star is this, satisfying this condition. The worst model M double star can be simply defined by assigning the density approaching to zero from the right at YSI given YSI, that is PI double star is zero plus. So this particular portion becoming kind of technical issue, but it will be more clear when I formally define the Breckman divergence criteria, since the BDC. Okay, of course, like in the same line with AIC, BIC, BIC, so now it's naturally BDC. To implement the maximum distance approaching 16, the appropriate divergence measure should be determined. Here we consider Breckman divergence. Incorporating the Breckman divergence in one, 
and the formula 16, the best model can be determined by K double studies or maximum of this. So you have to find this optimization problem. But equivalently, K double studies are the max because the other part is constant, free from K. So you just simplify and you have to do optimization of over K of this quantity, this inner product minus shy DK for a suitable convex function shy. So here you can tell that how do you choose the convex function shy. There are a lot of choices. It depends on what is your scoring function. So K double star I just defined here because that is the optimization you have to do. You cannot do optimization just like earlier I found the base rule as the mean. Here you have to spell out what is your shy. But interestingly when you spell out your shy function, then you get lots of interesting results. So, a BDC criteria, Bregman divergence criteria, is BDC DK is the inner product minus that, where DK is what the best probability is. And it becomes a discrete optimization problem. Okay. So, the defined BDC measures the dissimilarity with respect to a certain loss function under Bregman divergence between the vector of predictive densities of the proposed model MK and the vector of predictive densities of the worst model which has zero densities in the hypothetical field. So the probability of posteriors are evaluated at a finite number of points. It becomes a discrete problem which is much easier to handle. Now, again, the follow-up, the continuation of the previous table if psi x is norm x squared, BDC is this. And the scoring rule is the quadratic score. There are already people like Adrian Raftery and Nating. They actually didn't think of the BDC point of view, but they already talked about what sort of scoring rule you have. So again, if it is a quadratic, you get the weighted quadratic score. So you have to see what type of scoring rule you can think of and then define what will be shy x. Of course, from shy x to that you can go, but you can also go this way and this will be in between. Okay. So furthermore, depending on the definition of P super k, the PDC is equivalent to the several existing Bayesian model selection method. A base factor, pseudo base factor, increasing base factor, etc. When BDC is the logarithm score. And again, calculation of predictive density is just given here, but I think uh, we have been doing this for many years. Anybody who has done CPO calculation can do that. Just for completion, it's there, but I am not going to this whole calculation on idea. Actually here it's done in a little more efficient way uh, and some approximation. Other way, a lot of people are initially, if you do just MCMC, sometimes efficiency loses. So if you can do some novel approximation in between. The similar idea exists for in lab calculation, the integrated uh, Laplace approximation. So some approximation and then Monte Carlo simulation, then it becomes much more, uh, the calculation will be faster. So, we can define now with all of these notions, suppose we have some observed data, and PDC will be logarithmic score, you get that. Quadratic score, you get this. Mean score, you get this. Now clearly, you may ask, how do I know what score function? Will use. There is no guideline for that. That is function of a loss specification type idea. But logarithm score is, from utility point of view, is most justified. And that was proved in Bernard and Smith book. So, Bayesian simultaneous estimation and variable selection with pregnant diabetes. 
we are getting more and more vessels in this direction. So, we introduce a new version of lasso, which is now very popular. Um, it's developed by using the Bregman divergence and the total Bregman divergence with certain convex functions in a patient family. Since the Bregman divergence and the total Bregman divergence induce both induce smooth differential loss function, all parameters which including the tuning parameter can be easily obtained by a simple algorithm derived from differentiating the full posterior density. In addition, we extend the proposed method to GLM as well as in the elastic mode. So what is the model setting for LASSO? Probably even if somebody is non-patient, there are a lot of work already done. Most of the work done in this area are non-patient. Only the first patient work was done by Park and George Kasselder by actually defining this penalty function in terms of prime. So this topic is now becoming more and more important because a lot of time we are facing the problem of large p small n number one. Number two, the reduced rank problem, that is x may not be full rank, full column rank. So in that case, so that means there are many of the betas which may be zero. Like in many of the genomic exper uh, experiments, when you study the microarray, only few shows and others are just saying that this uh, gene is not expressed. So where y is the response vector, beta equals x is design matrix, mu is overall mu, epsilon is the vector of, say IID normal for the time mu. You can move to other distribution. Let's take y equal to x beta, standard regression problem, and with normal zero i. Assume that our parameter of interest beta is high dimensional or large dimension than the row space of the design matrix X. That is Q is very large or Q greater than N. The last thing. In this case, the ordinary least square estimate is inappropriate because it may not exist or even if it exists, it will be additionally requiring two numerous variable selection steps. As an alternative to the OLS method, the LASSO, first proposed by Tip in 1996, estimate the parameter beta by minimizing this quantity plus the penalty function absolute by the beta g. By lambda positive, the L1 penalty in 29 induces sparse solution of beta. However, the LASSO method requires a deterministic tuning parameter lambda prior to implementing parameter estimation. That is, you have to propose the tuning parameter. The Bayesian LASSO is written as the following hierarchical Bayesian model with Laplace prior on the parameter beta and the gamma prior on lambda square, not lambda. So f of this is normal, then the penalty phi beta given lambda, it was now put it in terms of prior, which has this structure, and then other is the gamma. So clearly, when you calculate the posterior, the product, and then take the log, so log of the posterior density will be those and then the penalty function. So unlike the ordinary lasso, the Bayesian lasso provides all parameter estimates including lambda via MCMC method, but it is more computationally intensive. So we actually propose something called P2D lasso. Okay. Now we introduce the new lasso method called Bayesian Breckman divergence or P2D lasso using the Breckman divergence in one and total Breckman divergence in four. Be a hierarchical patient. So, likelihood function 
is proportional to e to the power minus b d chi zero. Chi zero is x prime x. Now here, if you choose x prime x, clearly this will be a normal likelihood function. But now you have the option. For example, you can choose chi x is some deviance function or Linux type loss. Then you get a different likelihood. So that is, you can easily extend this result of lasso to exponential uh, family of distribution. Because of this fragment divergence notion and with all the score function in that sheet. So pi beta given lambda be the prior on coefficient vector beta. So the first stage is the likelihood function. So GLM model, you choose your BD different, shy zero different way. Like if you wanted to pass on equation. Okay. Now beta given lambda prior coefficient of beta. So pi beta given lambda is proportional to exponential minus lambda. Here we took DDD. There is a reason for that. This thing, DDD, remember total fragment divergence was dividing this by some normalizing constant, 1 plus some norm square. So that it will be more robust. And the big advantage is that will actually put, will be a special the case of Laplace trial. Okay. And pi lambda square with the prior on the square of the tuning parameter. So I have another and <coughs> divergence on shy 2. So shy 2 is typically minus a over 2 log x. So with all of these, now we can write down the posterior distribution of beta lambda, full posterior, as likelihood times conditional distribution for prior prior on beta given lambda and prior on lambda. And then you can write down this. And you will see that this becomes, this is actually, I told you from the distance you can create a density. So if many of the betas are zero, then the distance between beta and total fragment divergence between beta and zero will exactly be this form. So this form comes from the total fragment divergence or between beta and zero, and this is now just playing the role of the prior. So it is worth noting that this is a very important point. The TBD, two times TBD equal to that, which is this, and converts to beta G as C goes to infinity. So that that is Tetsuran is lasso becomes a special case when this C parameter goes to infinity. C is a hyperparameter known. Hence the B2D lash is approximately equal to the Bayesian lash for large enough C. Here we assume that C is large enough, that is why we named B2D lash. Unlike the Bayesian lash in which MCM sampling should be implemented, our method enables to easily obtain the map estimate of beta hat by differentiating the full posterior density. So once you have the map estimate, and then beta hat can be obtained by updating the current estimate beta t. As, so one iterative method you can do. The Tipshiranis approach, you have to fix the value of the tuning parameter. But now everything comes in this kind of iterative procedure. So computationally, this is definitely not only more efficient, not, so I shouldn't say it will take time, of course, but you don't have to specify what is the tuning parameter. And to find the standard error okay, of the B2D lasso estimator, then you do some approximation. So the take home message is you finding map estimate is very simple and very quickly it can be done. But then if you do some Gaussian approximation, uh, appropriate approximation, then you can use the, those to form your credible interval. Because the people in electrical engineering or many things, or data miner, they just provide the estimate. They don't want to 
provide the credible ratio. Okay, so approximately credible interval can be obtained from 38 equation. And then there are quite a few. So I think the major thing I communicated, the in addition our method will be easily adapted to the elastic net, which is more powerful to than the lasso when q greater than n by introducing an additional constraint and the corresponding prime. Because these will be just the product scenario. So I think any question, let me stop here at this point.